Back to biking, part one. My uh, week-long road test, the playoffs, BMW R1200GS, RT, Suzuki V-Strom, 650 and 1000. So, safe journey. See if I can remember everything my instructor taught me. Here we go. Nice and easy does it. So let's go out for about 45 minutes or an hour or so and just see whether this uh, bike is suitable for a, a back to biker. How user friendly are you? Everybody says the weight disappears. So far, so good. It's a big beast, though. Thing is, with a back to biking biker, everything's new my helmet, my jacket, my reflective vest, my boots, my jeans, my over trousers. With a lifesaver. So my idea is to uh, not only test ride these, but also I suppose I struggled a bit trying to find information for someone who's been off the bike for, in my case, 37 years. How you actually climb back on again, the process you go through. So I've taken about a year to think this through. Looked at all the possible options, looked at what my requirement was, looked at the possible candidates. Had about 10 or 12 bikes at one stage. But over the last month or so I've thinned that down to the, uh, the 1200 GS, the, uh, the RT. And on Sunday I had the opportunity to ride um, the two V-Stroms, the 650 and the 1000, at a, a Suzuki uh, cafe ride, which was really good fun. A lot to think about. So today the plan is just take it very easy, get the feel of the bike. Could I see myself on one of these? getting a bit of buffeting check the mirrors every eight seconds so my instructor told me it's funny what you forget and what you remember actually the uh, the clumsy things at the moment for me are the uh, the clutch the use of the clutch the gear changes a skill which if you stop practicing it starts to fade but the actually being on the bike the, uh, the memory does come back so thank you to Gary it uh, feels very steady it obviously feels uh, bigger than a V-Strom there's uh, more sort of uh, superstructure in front of you You get a real sense of quality though, just looking at everything. Get the impression this is a bike that can take you where you want to go. So what's my requirement then for a motorbike? 
I'm 58 years old. I don't want to go particularly quickly, but at my stage in life, I want something that when I get on it makes me feel good about hitting myself. I've got to put a smile on my face, I've got to enjoy it. It mustn't be too intimidating, it mustn't be too much of a challenge, but at the same time, I'd like um, I'd like the ability to be able to, uh, or at least the opportunity to uh, practice some skills. So I don't mind going a little bit out of my comfort zone, just don't want to go too far. My ambition is to ride to the same standard that a police biker would ride. Now whether that will ever happen or not, but it'd be good to aim for it. So the other requirement is um, ultimately, you know, in the sort of medium to long term, maybe take a couple of tours in. I like the idea of the North Coast 500, Lake District, see a bit of the world. And already, just over the last uh, two weeks or so, that I've actually physically been back on the motorcycle. I've just uh, been uh, bowled over, really, by how friendly the motorcycling community is, how generous they are with their advice. So uh, there's a nice sense of friendship there as well. It's something I can just do, just get on the bike and ride. So, so my requirement also would be for a bike that's not going to let me down. It's um, it's got to have all the idiot-proof mod cons on ABS traction control. Lights, extra lights, front and back, so I'm seen. to be reasonably cost effective to own as well so that's one of the question marks at the moment against the BMWs the cost of uh, owning one versus the uh, I would say considerably lower cost of owning a uh, Suzuki but is that outweighed by the quality Questions, questions. You're certainly aware of the engine on this. Um, Maybe noisier than I expected it to be. The idea this week is to ride all four bikes in one week. So I've got the, uh, the consciousness really, the recall for what bikes can do. And then the plan is to sleep on it and make a decision. So one of the advantages of course with the um, with the BMWs is they are more or less ready to go in sense of the, the touring so obviously you need the panniers, might want to put some lights on but if I was going to buy the um, the V-Strom then I'd have to uh, invest probably a couple of K's there to bring them to a, a similar standard and it's interesting I've looked at a lot of forums and a lot of armchair riding over the last uh, last few months really and it seems to be a big debate actually the uh, the BMW 1200 GS versus the V-Strom 1000 so 
Uh, I guess there'll be quite a few people who are looking at this. Hope it helps. Go easy on me in the comments because uh, I've still in effect got the L plates on. When I took a bike test back in 1980, I think, no, possibly no, 79 actually. It basically consisted of, you went out, you bought yourself a bike. So my biking history was, I started on a Honda PC50 with pedals, a wooden box on the back. Uh, my friends at Sixth Form College called it the Blue Flash. Top speed of 27 miles an hour, but it basically beat, stopped, meant I having to catch buses everywhere, so it was freedom. So upgraded from that to a Suzuki GT185, bought it from Vin Ducket's motorcycles, Thornton Cleveley's. Uh, didn't really understand gears, so set off from Vin Ducket's, got st stuck at a set of traffic lights for five minutes trying to work the gears out. Much to the consternation of the people behind me. Upgraded from that to a Honda 250 Dream, which was a beautiful bike, ran like a little sewing machine, although maybe it was a little bit under power, but it was a, a lovely bike. I have to say. And then from that, um, the sort of pinnacle of my motorcycling was the uh, Suzuki GS550, an S registered one. GCK748S, I wonder where you are now. It's funny how these things stick. Then I was, uh, I passed my car test. So, I sold the Suzuki, bought an FS1E. Everywhere I went, clouds of blue smoke behind me. I had a 50, 50 mile round trip commute on that. Ran that for six months while I saved up from my car, which was a Morris Marina. And anyway, back to the test. So what you do when you're taking a test in those days is basically turned up at the test centre. There was a man there with a gabardine Mac and a Trilby hat on a clipboard. And you drove around the block two or three times and he wanders up and um, he's going to give you an emergency stop signal so he, he walks along the road in front of you, you've got to pretend not to see him and then he basically raises his left hand and you've got to look surprised and basically brake and the idea is you brake as soon as you can, you don't lock the front wheel and essentially you pass the test so that was the, uh, the standard in those days a bit different now I think for an overtake, shall we? Plenty of pulling six gear, even from the small speeds that I'm doing. Well, I'm certainly planning to take it very easy today. Someone else's bike, and I'm back on the learning curve. No idea how hard I'm concentrating right now, those of you experienced bikers who are watching this. Literally have to think about everything I do. Consciously incompetent. Just an impression, and this is based on the fact that eight days ago I was on the V-Strom. This engine actually doesn't feel as smooth as the V-Strom. But then again, I might uh, adapt that opinion when I, uh, when I ride the V-Strom later on in this week. Now then, I think this is where I'm going to take a right turn. Here's so indicator, lifesaver. Mm. 
he's on the front brake. Not only am I riding a new bike for the first time in 37 years, I'm also on a new set of roads. So. So another question is, is this too much bike? Is this over-specified for what I need? I've got a huge list of uh, criteria including distance from the dealer, servicing costs, fun factor, reliability, will it be able to tour, will I enjoy taking it through the twisty lanes? Appreciation, I guess, is another consideration. I think too often in life we get, um, what's the word, uh, a little bit sort of fuddled, don't we, by the, the specifications, the bells and whistles. You know, my Range Rover, uh, I probably use 20% of its capability. Lovely car, though. Had it for 10 years now. Another skill that um, you lose is the slow speed, the sort of small turning circle skills. And I'm trying to remember my instructor told me to look where I want to go, don't look down. An ideal day really. Looked at the weather forecast, promised to be dry. But anyway, here we are. I presume a bike like this not put off by a bit of rain, unlike the rider. About uh, six weeks ago I took a trip in the car up into Lincolnshire, visited the sports bike shop, uh, spent four hours there, a very patient young man called Chris who basically got me kitted out with literally everything. When you start from scratch it's, uh, and everything's changed so much you see as well, because when I initially rode, um, you basically had, uh, well if you had some money, you had a full face helmet, they never fitted properly and they were always third hand. Uh, wax cotton jacket and trousers that always leaked. Boots that always leaked. I tell you, luxury. Sounding like the four Yorkshiremen now, Monty Python. Be careful. It's uh, amazing as well how many people are really generous with their knowledge on YouTube. I found it so helpful looking at all these uh, vlogs. Um, I've ridden literally million, about a million miles in the last 12 months, sitting watching over people's shoulders on these YouTube videos. Stuart Fellingham, thank you. Missenden Flyer, thank you. Chris on the street, thank you. Spicy. Thank you, and many others I've looked at as well actually, so thank you to all of you, very generous with your knowledge, it really does help. So I think time to get off the, uh, the bigger roads, the A roads onto a few back roads. spot anything I'm doing wrong, or everything I'm doing wrong, feel free to leave comments, as long as you're nice. I'm 
when I was out with the instructor, I went to Bedford, and um, where we started from. So just a big shout out to Tim. Thank you very much, Tim. Got me back on it. Got me feeling confident again. And for the second ride out, we went to uh, Old Warden Aerodrome. Uh, an aircraft are a passion of mine. Spent 40 years building them. My dad flew a Lancaster. So we arrive at Old Warden. Helmets off. Cup of tea. And there's a hurricane. 20 minutes later, up she goes. Sound of the Merlin engine. Absolutely magic. And if you're in the vicinity, I presume you know about it anyway, but just a strong recommendation, really. The thing was so low key as well, because uh, the kind of aircraft I'm used to working with take a lot of people to get them up there. This was basically one guy with an electrical trolley and a fire extinguisher. Very blessed to live in England. And one of the plans later for this uh, YouTube channel, God willing, will be to do what I call some history rides. Another passion of mine. I'm quite into the archaeology, part of a local group. Get out metal detecting occasionally. Not find much, but it's a nice walk. I love history. If you enjoy history, you're never short of a book to read. This is a bit of a test for me now, these little lanes. Lots of autumn leaves. Very forgiving this gearbox, I guess there's so much uh, torque. There's obviously a very wide overlap between the gears. Ooh, that was a tight one for me. Easy for you experts, but not for me. Nice not to have anybody behind me. This uh, pin lock system on the helmet's working well. Definite impression on the um, the GS. It's like a. I don't know whether this is just me being a wuss or not, or being over uh, critical. But as you accelerate, it. Um, it can feel a little bit harsh. Maybe that's what they call character. And maybe that's, I guess, something you probably get used to. And I have to say, now I'm on it, it doesn't actually, because it doesn't feel particularly wide. Because my initial impression was when I first saw one of these was just how high and how wide it was at the front, because it wasn't anything like the kind of bikes I've been used to riding many, many years ago. So you just forget all that, actually. It's. Um, I suspect the uh, the GS is very much uh, function over fashion. It's built to do a job. Literally moves up to 60 without even thinking about it. Summer gloves on today, that's all I've got. And these uh, hand guards keep the blast off. No sense at all of hands being cold. It's probably about 15 degrees today anyway. Well, there's no question, there's plenty of power there, more than I would ever need.
what uh, got me into riding the BMWs. I'd actually crossed them off my list. Um, but I rode the 650 Suzuki uh, in the morning uh, last week on the Suzuki Cafe ride, and then I rode the 1000. I think I'd more or less made my mind up on the 650, but you know when you sleep on these things, you think, oh, if only, would I really relish that extra power? You know, I'm probably only ever going to do this once, so I'm only ever going to have one bike. Yeah, so um, worked out it was going to be about eight and a half k, something like that, for a a V-Strom thousand XT. But then, if you want to turn it into a GS, or turn it into something that you can tour on and navigate with, and have your crash bars and your extra lights fitted, top box panniers, all that kind of stuff, you add another two thousand on. So take your eight and a half thousand up to ten and a half thousand. So you can basically have a new V-Strom XT 1000 <coughs> Excuse me, for around about 10.5k I reckon ish or maybe less if the dealer can come up with something better So, you then go on to Auto Trader, eBay 10.5k buys you uh, a GS, 1200 GS a couple of years old anywhere between five and 10,000 miles on uh, and also a little bit more buys you the 1200 RT so then your dilemma then is do I buy a new Suzuki which is uh, brand new to me with all the bells and whistles on or do I buy a couple of year old BMW but it's not that simple is it because of course you've got uh, the cost of servicing uh, maintenance Bits go, bits uh, break and so forth, it's going to be more expensive. So that's what this week's all about, really just trying to work my way through that, uh, that puzzle and always reminding myself that um, it always comes down to the requirement, what do I want the bike to do? To indicate then and do my lifesaver. Consciously incompetent again. Yeah, so the, that's uh, that's what it's all about. So um, I'm hoping to ride the RT next. I don't know if that's possible, but we shall ask. Well, I think this is a lovely bike, but is it too much? Is it over specified for what I'm going to do with it, or would I grow into that extra capability? Like, like this, would its reputation intimidate me? Whereas if I got on a Suzuki, would it feel like an old comfy blanket? Questions, questions. Very uh, commanding road position. The bikes I rode nearly 40 years ago, you sat a lot lower. You probably sat a good six inches lower, I would say. So the fact that you can look down on the world um, is actually give, it gives, uh, gives confidence. And I've got to say, I'm not aware of any... I mean, I've obviously only been out a very short time, but I get the impression that you could ride this all day without sort of any aches and pains as you get into your late 50s like I am. And, uh, you want something that's going to feel comfortable, it's going to basically fit you. You don't want to have to conform to it. And the seat's very comfortable, the, the riding position, very uh, instinctive really.
no doubt I'm going to have to do some more training, I think. More, get more instruction. Be money well spent. I guess like many of you, got a, my wife wasn't particularly happy about this, but uh, she's come to terms with it. And she now wants me to go and do it. Give me sort of her blessing to make that happen. But the, uh, the promise was, uh, which I've agreed to, I never let my children go on the back of it. And also I've got to ride safe, so wearing a high-vis vest. I shall have extra lights front and rear. As I said before, all the, uh, all the toys in terms of cruise control, and, sorry not cruise control, ABS, traction control, risk mitigation. I guess you're aware of the difference between mitigation and contingency, are you? So mitigation is things we do to try to stop the risk happening or to reduce its probability or impact if it does. Um, contingency is the plan you put in place in case the risk happens. So the, the classic one of that, it's the airbag on the car. It's the, uh, the shoulder padding in your jacket, the back protector, the knee protectors. Risk management's about doing both. Ideally today, I'd like to have got off these dual carriageways a little bit, but the petrol lights flashing And also, I don't really know the uh, the territory around here either. So, keep your distance. Quite a bit of buffeting. 70 miles an hour, but I want to gather on the, uh, watching all these uh, YouTube experts, is that you can cure that. I just the height of the screen, a Vario screen on. Also been a big help to me so far. I uh, on Twitter, there's uh, a couple of shouts out to uh, a couple of ex. I think uh, both uh, two police bikers actually. There's Rosie, police biker, and Chris. Again, been very generous with their advice. I think it's Rosie that runs a really good blog. I read his article on cornering the other day. So YouTube, I'm watching, uh, I think is it Nottingham Roadcraft? Chap down in Cornwall as well, who's a blood biker. Forgive me, I forgot your name, it'll come back to me. But again, just really helpful, building a picture, but there's no sub... things that Rosie said was you have to be able to stop in the distance you can see to be safe. So not on that basis so I'll just back off a little bit. Camp Road's new bike, green biker. I'm 
obviously, uh, well not obviously, but I'm a very experienced driver. 25,000 miles a year for the last 20 years. But it's different. Some of the things you read across, some of it you're starting again. In a car basically, you know, you get into a problem, you can usually just slam the brakes on and solves 19 out of 20 problems, but on a bike, do that in the wrong situation, I guess you're, uh, you're asking for trouble, so... I've not been able to evaluate today um, going around twisty lanes, but I think at this stage, I think maybe that's not such a bad thing. I need to practice. I need to uh, build my confidence, my ability. So at the moment, this kind of riding, I think it's probably tailor-made for me. And over time, the, uh, the learning journey will take me back to that. Back towards Northampton now. A little bit of history for you. So, um, at one stage in history, it was possible that Northampton could have been the seat of the English Parliament. And Northampton did have a castle, it's now been totally obliterated by the railway station. And one of the significant battles of the Wars of the Roses was fought here in 14 something or other. Behind the white van now, so I don't know what Missenden fly whether you'd ever watch this, but uh, dedicated to you. I would say this machine is very forgiving. Beautiful piece of kit. Get out of his blind spot. I guess nobody enjoys roundabouts, but at this stage in my uh, return to biking life cycle, I still find them quite intimidating. Again, forgetting lifesavers, forgetting to indicate. Went for a marginal amber light there. All things to improve on. As so often in life, it's the things you get away with that you, uh, you learn from. I'm sure Gary will breathe a big sigh of relief when he sees his motorbike appearing back. Time for a chat, a cup of tea and a little bit of reflection. <laughs> 